Here I am on the road again. Oh, there I go. Is that what you're Turn listening to today? Pay. No, Sue, so you know why I'm singing Bob Seeger? Why are you singing Seeger? I love Seeger. Because Seeger's birthday today. Oh my gosh. Is it Bob Seeger's yes. birthday? Yes. Out here in the spotlight. Yeah, I, I thought you were talking about like uh, Megan and uh, Harry's kid turning two, you know? <laughs> no, I don't give a shit about that. What are you saying? <laughs> You, mean you don't give a you don't give a crap about Archie Mountbatten. No, nah, is that his name? Yeah, Archie Mountbatten. Yeah, Archie Mountbatten. Mm-hmm. What does that even mean, Archie Mountbatten? <laughs> what what does that mean? What do you mean? What it means? What does it mean? Smithy, what does it mean? What does it all mean? <laughs> oh, no, no, we don't want to see Rudy anymore. Uh, Rudy's I, out. Owie, Audi. I've saved that for posterity. Suk, everybody's loading up. We have an amazing show tonight. Uh, filmmaker, director, legendary director Shane Stanley's here. Uh, we've got Izzy Burns, 19 years old from Idaho. Wait till you hear the That's voice on this young lady. Uh, we got a lot of stuff to do. Mother's Day's coming up. And, uh, Mother's Day's this Sunday. It's early this yeah. year. My mother's like, it's next weekend. I'm like, no, Ma, it's this weekend. Yep, no, yep, it's yep. next weekend. It's the 14th. No, Ma. It's this weekend. <laughs> Philly kid will be here. I'm going to show you some great Mother's Day gifts, Sue, that you can give to your mother. Okay, you might not want to, it. but you can give them to her. You ready to start this? <laughs> not that you want to. <laughs> you might is not you, want is to. Is there anything with a sombrero? Anything uh, with that sombrero? No, no. The sombrero guy's gone. He's gone. What are you giving your wife the old hammer and nail? <laughs> well, you know, if I'm lucky. <laughs> uh, so, Sue, you ready to go? <laughs> that, that was Eric's joke. He was like, he was. That was such a fireman joke, wasn't it? It was uh, such a fire. <laughs> Those friggin' New York City firemen, they're all the same. They're all the same. You want to start it up? You Should I hit let's the. Do it, uh, man. Let's start up the, the show. Thing. Scotty, I'm ready in three, two, one. Let's do it. The Suki and Scott Show. This is one of the funnest shows I've ever done. It's musical, it's magical. <laughs> Oh, yeah. I this is a sexy Someone's getting some action. These larger than life personalities are on an exciting new journey as they bring you the Suki and Scott Show. You guys I nailed it. You're great. You ask great questions. You listen. The Suki and Scott Show is your one stop destination for humor. You just got George's earwax all over your ears, bud. Entertainment. Just girl. girl. Wonderful. And optimism. You guys have such amazing energy. <laughs> Let's laugh together. I love him. The Suki and Scott Show. Ah, Suki, it's Thursday. That means it's our last show of the week. You know, there's kind of a bittersweetness to it, but uh, I need a break, man. I need a rest. I gotta rest. So. Listen, after Cinco de Mayo, I thought I feel like we could we could do anything. <laughs> <laughs> Cinco de Mayo show like put me over the top. Suk, I got a little programming note for everybody. This month, we're usually not on on Mondays. We're not oh, on yes, on Mondays this and Friday. Monday we are. This Monday we are on at one o'clock live uh, because uh, we are going to be joined by Joey Fatone. Ba uh, ba we'll be- ba. And I have been in one scene for you. Suk, what if he came on and we just thought he was Justin Timberlake the whole time? <laughs> we would, we'd freak him out, right? We'd freak I think we him should right do out. something like that. Right? We should be like, man, you're really great in that movie. Yeah, yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Friends like, with Benefits, Joey. That was, uh, was, really that was amazing. Yeah, we'll just, we'll do Justin's career. We'll interview him. Like Congratulations, you have two kids now. Yeah, I mean, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. What's um, it like being married to Jessica Biel? <laughs> He'll freak about he'll, he'll hang up on us. Um, <laughs> and and then Chris Ruggiero is a fantastic singer. We added him to the show because God forbid we just have one uh, fantastic guest. We have to have two. And since no, we're we like on, to keep our audience all the time plugged in, entertained. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and look, and they're all here. Go ahead, so read them up, babe. Read them up. All right, here we go. Jeannie Clay is here. Donna Freshetto, Susan Smith, Yvonne Burns, Rory Wright, Joanne Thibault. She's French, remember? <laughs> Johan, uh, Rory Wright, Philippine Richardson, Paula Giordano, Basile, um, Joanne name. Fanslew. Uh, everyone's here. Sherry Hetrick, I'm sure she's here because yesterday she got upset at me because I didn't say hello to her. Ah. And our friends at Only Good TV are here. Yes, we love Only Good TV, of course. Aaron uh, Myers, too. Simulcasting over on that uh, platform as well. 
Um, and soup, we have added so many new, so many new viewers over the last couple of weeks. It's unbelievable. I think you need to turn down your uh, speaker again a little bit. Okay. Um, but uh, listen, tonight we've got again great show. Shane Stanley's here. Uh, remember we had um, Steve Gutenberg on, and I Tazia Telez was on, and uh, they were promoting Break Even, which came out back in December. Uh, well, Shane Stanley is the he's the guy who directed that movie. Uh, and he's got he's got so many credits to his name. We're gonna we're gonna go over a few things with him. Uh, did get you know did a movie with the Rock, Gridiron Gang back in the day, and uh, just an amazing career. He's I mean, his awards. On. I mean, and he wrote a book. Yeah. Too. You're right. He's got he's got a new book out. What you don't learn in film school, which is pretty mm -hmm. cool. Uh, and Izzy Burns is coming up. She is uh, fantastic. From uh, it's Moscow, Idaho. Souk. I didn't know there was a town in Idaho. I did know that. I did know that. You, you knew that. Idaho. Yep. Oh, mm -hmm. okay. All right. I thought I was uh, just something new for me. But, it's like uh, Moscow, Idaho, Wauwatosa, Wisconsin, you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I know. There's a Florida, New York. All Isn't that it a Russian PA or something like that? <laughs> no, that's it's Blue Balls, Pennsylvania. Blue Balls, PA. <laughs> yes, exactly. Right next to Intercourse, Pennsylvania. At, next to Intercourse. Yes, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think I went to a bowling alley in Intercourse, Pennsylvania, one time. I'm uh, sure you did. Did you bowl a couple? <laughs> yeah, with the uh, with the, um, the 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 Amish folks who were bowling. They're very good bowlers. <laughs> the Amish suit. They made a movie about it. Um, they did. Woody, yeah, don't you remember the movie with Woody Harrelson? You yeah. don't remember that movie no, where he was No, I just bowling? remember the uh, the the one where they were Amish and the uh, what was his name? Harrison Ford. Harrison Ford. Yeah, the kid That's... was hiding out. Mm-hmm. All right. Great explanations by us on both of those movies. Uh, we are such <laughs> the kid. The guy, yeah, the guy, the kid. You know, that guy. I've seen the movie a hundred times. I can't remember the name right well, now. See, that's, Eric, what is that? Where, where uh, Woody Harrelson, he's got the, no, Woody Harrelson's got the fake hand and he bowls against, uh, what's no, his name? No, that's Nicholas like, Cage with the fake hands, Moonstruck. Remember? Oh, Jesus, Suki. I'm talking about the bowling movie with Woody Harrelson. <laughs> What's wrong with you? Uh, all right, listen. Oh, Kingpin. See, I knew Shane Stanley would know what it was. Kingpin with Woody Harrelson. You never saw that movie? Probably not. Oh, Jesus Christmas, Suki. Uh, all right, listen. I got some gifts for you for your mother before we bring Shane in. Okay. Um, you're going to love these because they're perfect for Mother's Day. Um, okay. Here's here's a good one you can get her. Mommy's Little shit. <laughs> With the names of the kids, and we love you. I think that's pretty. Oh, it's funny. It's pretty endearing, right? Not bad. Uh, here's one that I like to get my mother every year. I get her a pair of socks with my I face. I love that. I've done, I did that this year right? for a friend's uh, birthday. birthday. That was I put his wife's picture all over it. <laughs> you can go with uh, this mug here, dear mom. Dear thanks mom. for wiping my ass and stuff. <laughs> love Suki. You want to throw that one in there? I thought that's a good one. These are all for order online, Suki, by the way. Uh, uh, you're really, really great, Mom. The best. Really terrific. Just fantastic. Other moms, losers. Total disasters. <laughs> Everyone agrees you are the best. Believe me. <laughs> I sent I sent that one to my mother. She almost had a heart attack. You know, she was, <laughs> she's a very big Trump fan. My mom would want the other one. Proud mother of a few dumbass kids. I might like yeah. that one. <laughs> you get that one. I get for you. Uh, and That's finally, so, for me. this is my favorite card. I'm getting it from my mother, my wife. I'm going to send one to my sister. And uh, this one, mom of all the vaginas in the world, I'm glad I came out of you. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, from the folks somewhere over in the UK with the mom, I have mom, to assume. Yes, I love that <laughs> card, though. I mean, like, can we download it? Oh. Suk, listen, if any one of those, you just text me after the show. Let me know which ones you want. I like I'll, the first I'll, one, and I like the last card. I feel like that kind of wraps up the whole sentiment. Perfectly. Out of all the vaginas in all the world, <laughs> I'm glad I came out of yours, Ma. <laughs> uh, listen, you ready for a little Shane Stanley action? I love it. I mean, yeah, Shane is huge. Uh, Shane Stanley is a is a filmmaker, Suk. Uh, he's an author. The guy moves author. at 110 miles an hour. Uh, he's done it all. He's seen it all, and he's only just begun. Uh, here's a little quick inner, uh, uh, an inter, uh, introspection introduction uh, to Mr. Stanley before we bring him on. Here he is. Wonderful. I'm Shane Stanley, and I'm a filmmaker. 
I've been producing movies for over 30 years and I have spent my entire life in this industry. I just finished writing a book called What You Don't Learn in Film School to help you make your independent film from concept to delivery. I don't care if you are a film school student just starting out or you're a seasoned pro. I want to make sure your journey on this path to becoming everything you want your career to be is as easy and painless as possible. There are parts of this book that are going to tell you how to set up a proper business structure for every film you try to make. And it's also going to teach you how to make a presentation for private equity so you can go make your movie. We're going to cover casting your film. So many of us have limited budgets and the first thing we think about is, I wish I could get this actor or that actor. You want to get names that the world recognizes? I'm going to show you how to do that. During post-production, you're going to learn a lot about not only your film, but yourself as a filmmaker. And sometimes that can be a painful process. But what's even worse is the time, energy, and money that gets spent during this period that's unnecessary. Having the right sales agency behind your project is everything, and more so, making sure your film lands with the right distributor. You need to really understand the pitfalls and the deception that comes with those presentations and trying to land your product. The one thing I push in my book is relationships. Relationships are the key to success. What you will learn in this book is from concept to delivery, how to make a movie and deliver something that far exceeds your wildest expectations. I feel oh. like that's like a motivational speech for life. Yes. <laughs> Not just super, movies. Super. Before we bring Shane in, I think by the time you and I are done working him over, he's going to want to do a buddy cop film with us. <laughs> and I think... <laughs> I, I, Maybe with you. Him, I'm already thinking, Sue. Just, don't say anything. Just bring him to work on it. Bring him in. There he is, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Shane Stanley in the house. Shane, what's cooking, my friend? Man, I tell you, this is this is awesome. Thanks for having me. I'm good. <laughs> it's an honor to be here. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Everyone's love- excited to see you. Uh, they're all saying hello. Aaron Myers, Patricia Lynn Wallace, uh, Elisa Jewell. Irene Fitzhugh, everyone's saying hello. Hello, Shane. Hello. Welcome to the party. Welcome to our party. Shane, come back. Come back, Shane. Yeah, I'm sure you never heard that before, right? Um, Listen, man, let's start from, uh, you know, we'll get to everything you've done, but when was it, when was it in your lifetime, Shane, that you got the bug that you knew you wanted to be on the other side of the camera? Well, you know, um, you start growing up and bills need to be paid and, you know, you better start figuring out what you're going to do with your life. And, you know, I have to credit, uh, I had a great um, photography teacher at Agora High School. Uh, Ken Neely was his name. And I had been fortunate to be involved with uh, some of the projects that my father and my mother were doing. Uh, We had won a lot of Emmys and had some success, but I wasn't really devoted to the industry. I was just very fortunate to be a part of it. And he, he pulled me after class and just said, you know, I'm worried about your future. You're a senior in high school. You've got a couple of Emmys. You, you're racing dirt bikes. You're playing in a band. You're, <laughs> you, dude, you have zero direction in your life. You need to figure out what you're doing. <laughs> I've only, heard that before, Shane. It only took till I was about 23 to finally, you know, figure out what he meant. But yeah, I guess better late than never. <laughs> <That's> so <laughs> funny, man. Yeah, because your, your dad was also a, a filmmaker too, yeah. right? Yeah, he was. He started out as an actor and he was he was a working actor in the 60s. I mean, he co-starred in Ice Station Zebra and Mannix and Mod Squad and Hotel. And uh, it was when he was working on Ice Station Zebra, um, he he made a suggestion for a shot. They didn't have time for it. They said, if we if we do later, we'll get to it. Fast forward, he got to the world premiere of the show at Cinerama Dome. And uh, in, in, in the cut, they used his shot suggestion. And wow. that was the last time I think he ever acted. I think he turned to my mother and said, I want to be a filmmaker. And, you know, that was that. So that was it. Yeah. You also did a series with your father that aired on KTLA, right? That was That's like right. sort of, yeah. That's right. We did the Desperate Passage series. Everybody from Michael Landon to Sharon Glass, Eddie James Olmos, Marlo Thomas. Um, yeah, we, we did that. That ran from 1988 until 94. I think the last one we did was actually Gridiron Gang, which was remade into a, you know, a, a feature film with, uh, what's his name? Uh, who, this clown? That guy. Yeah. <laughs> oh. 
I uh, yeah, man, gridiron gang. Listen, when when you were working with The Rock, right? Obviously, uh, you know, back in the day, looked, you uh, know, he. This is you know back in the WWE days as I'm well. Not, I'm I'm bigger than he is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> did you did you ever think when you were working with him back in those days that this this present day this would be the same guy? Uh, that you were working with back then, did you know he was destined for 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 bigger and, and greater started, things? Yeah, never a doubt. And I don't say that for any other reason than I've never known a guy who, in front of the camera, first one there, last to last to go, hardest working guy in the room, so devoted, uh, absolutely just in the moment, present, everything he could do to make it better. Real quick, Dwayne's story. We were shooting uh, splits one night, which is when you start late and end early in the morning. We had some night stuff to do out at the prison we shot at. And he had, I think, about 103 degree fever. He was throwing up, as he said uh, at one interview, stuff was coming out of his body. <laughs> and they, they actually blew, uh, flew in his doctor or something. And, you know, we were like, well, let's just why don't we just call it a night? We can pick this. And he was like, no, I got this. Just give me 30 minutes. I got this. It was one of the more powerful scenes in the film he delivered. And it's, it's things like that. You know, I've been around this industry since I was in diapers. I've seen more people than I care to admit, you know, leave because the water's too cold or it's too sunny out or, you know, their, their guru told them it's not a good day to shoot. This guy doesn't pull any of that. <laughs> bullshit. He is, he is just the hardest working dude in a room. And that's why he's where he's at. Yeah, no, you know, when, when, you know, he's got that sitcom right now, and you sort of get a sense of who he is. I mean, I didn't. I mean, Scott works at WWE, so he's kind of known about The Rock forever. But for women like me who just love him, <laughs> that's not the love. I'm sure a lot I, of men. I, mean, it's not the love. I just love all of the sensibilities that he has. You know, in terms of like he loves his mother. He yep. seems very respectful. Core value systems. I mean, just just an all around good guy who has great tequila now. Yes, he does. <laughs> Followed after Sammy Hagar in that respect, right? Mm. Yeah, I haven't tasted Rock's tequila yet. I'll you be have the it? judge of that, Souk. No, I stick with one brand and I stick to it, man. That's you know. Don't be surprised if it has a little bit of a taste of pizza. I know that's his weak. <laughs> yeah, it's pizza. Right? Is pizza, so it might be. <laughs> yeah, no, just just a great guy, man. And uh, listen, one day he could be president. You never know. You never know. Um, I've seen crazier things. I think yeah. we all have. <laughs> yes, you have. And you know, you're right. Nothing would surprise us at this point, right? No, nothing, uh, nothing at all. Right? Nothing would surprise you. Um, you also, uh, you know, looking at some of the stuff today, a lot of Brett Michaels music videos. Are you got you good buddies with Brett Michaels? You know, Brett and I have known each other almost 30 years. And uh, we're dear friends. We, matter of fact, we talked just day before yesterday. His daughter, uh, Georgia, just had her 16th birthday uh, wow. yesterday on Cinco de Mayo. Happy birthday again, Georgia. Georgia. <laughs> uh, his other daughter, Rain, her birthday's on the 20th. And yeah, we've, we've been through a lot together. And I owe a lot of whatever I've had, good, bad, or indifferent in my life professionally to Brett. You know, he, uh, he endorsed my book. Uh, he, he went, you want to talk about loyalty. I mean, he, he went to bat for me. Uh, he, Charlie Sheen, and I had a company back in the mid '90s together, and he went to bat for me when a lot of people didn't want to stick up for me. Man, that guy's loyal to the core, and it's really great to see the success that he's had post Poison as well. Well deserved. Again, another guy who just works consistently. And you were also like a consulting producer on his show when he was sort of, you know, dating and doing all that, you know. I didn't get involved in any of that. It was more <laughs> just the production side, you know, make sure he had somebody in his corner. <laughs> that his best interest, you know, when they make those reality shows, they were they were really good to Brett. They had a lot of respect. You know, Leo Horowitz was running it, and the guys at Fifty One Minds, they're good guys. But you know, he was shooting the show, and they were cutting it and putting it out so fast. There wasn't somebody who really had only Brett's interest in mind. So you know, there was some of that, and just some some strat strategic stuff going on that we that we worked on together. But it was a real honor to do that with him. Did and, you ever and, really think those reality shows would be the content that is now being created and churned out? I tell you, the day I saw the O.J. Simpson Bronco chase, I knew we were up for quite a ride. <laughs> that will always be the first reality show in my book. 
Always, right? And, and listen, Always. hanging out hanging out with Brett Michaels has its uh, perks, no? And, well, that's not Brett Michaels. That's Vixen. But yeah, I absolutely love that. Very cool. Uh, I got to do a music video with them about a year and a half ago. I was with Lon Friend, who used to uh, run Rip Magazine. We were having dinner at the Rainbow of all places. And uh, Brittany <laughs> and uh, some of the girls from Vixen were there and LA Guns. And we just started talking and Lon said, hey, why don't you do a video for their upcoming Greatest Hits album? I hadn't done a music video in a while. So I said, let's do it. And Three weeks later, we were we were at the uh, Roxy. I, no, no, no. Forgive me. We were at the uh, Whiskey shooting a video for the new song. So much fun. That's wild. Listen, Listen I see a guitar you. behind you. Are you a musician? Yeah, do you, you mean, play, you? Shane? Not, no, no. I was a drummer for many years. Actually, Brett signed that. That was the guitar that he used in the, the video we did together, Fallen. That went number one. That was the guitar. It was actually my wife's guitar. Wow. He called me on his way into town and said, I don't have a guitar. She let me borrow it. He used it for the video, and he signed it. So it stays in my poison corner over there. <laughs> nice. Listen, if you want to text him to get him on the show next week, we wouldn't hurt we wouldn't hate you for it. You know what? I'll ask him if he'll do it. Why not? <laughs> Why not? Wait, and, and Brett what well, Brett was the guy who he had the video with Pam Anderson. That was Brett, I don't know anything right? about that. Oh, that son of a gun. That <laughs> son of a gun. I think there's uh, quite a few people have had videos with Pam Anderson now that yeah, I yeah. Uh, yeah. I've never I've never seen it before in my life. I'm just saying I've never seen it. Um, Shane, tell me about this picture right here. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was the very end, tail end of the doing anything in front of the camera, uh, you know, thing. So it was it was a, a headshot that was taken. Um, I think my dad may have taken that picture. I'm pretty yeah, sure you look you look good, man. You know who you remind me of in this picture? Remember the um there was a movie with uh, Mitch Gaylord. And um, the, the the woman that uh, Wayne Gretzky's married to. Oh, I reminded you of the woman Wayne Gretzky's. Married <laughs> to. <laughs> no, you're, you're, you look you look a little like you're like Mitch about, You're talking about the movie A Sure Thing. Was it when he was the gymnast? He well, played no, the gymnast. Oh no no no! Wasn't it the the movie where the guy? Maybe I'm screwing this whole thing up. I thought it was the the one. I thought it was Gretzky's wife who was in the Sure Thing. I could be completely wrong. Yeah, no, I think she was in that too. Was, he was a gymnast, and I can't remember. It was like all American or something like that. But uh, no, you look uh, that's who you look like in that shot. Don't you know um, who I used to think I was? I mean, I look at that and say, God, where did time go? I was I was probably 19 or 20 when that picture was taken. Yeah, man, look at that. I still have that shirt, by the way. <laughs> So um, That's listen. That's to be said that you can still fit into the damn shirt. I, mean, I didn't I say I could put it at Suki. I just said I had it. <laughs> you know who you remind me of? You remind me of Timothy Hutton in that shot. Is that possible? I love Timothy Hutton. One of my favorite movies, The Falcon and the Snowman. I love yes, it. Yes, I love great A Falcon movie. and a Snowman. Oh, what a great film with Sean yeah. Penn. Oh, it's great. And what was the other one with with the two of them uh, with the with the uh, army school, the military school? Oh, Taps, another Taps. great Taps. Yep, the Tom really Cruise, uh, George C. Scott. Yep, that was a, a, that was a phenomenal movie. Really good, man. Another another movie you uh, mistrust. Yeah, yeah with right? James with Moore and Parker, James yeah, and, and Parker Stevenson, and uh, boy, what what a, what a, a you know, you talk about a just a, a woman who's got that like just how that whole Hollywood vibe to her, right? Uh, just the way she talks, the way she presents herself. Um, you know, Jane Seymour is you know one of those classic Hollywood beauties. Look at me photo bombing her and William Shockley. <laughs> That's right. They didn't know you were in that shot, huh? No, they didn't. They had no idea. Actually, that was something they were doing for Dr. Quinn, and I jumped in. And that's actually how I got the script to her so we could make the movie. That is so, so funny. Wait, I, you know, so so you were talking about when your book and everything, but you were talking about connections. Mm -hmm. And it seems like whenever you made a connection, you kept that connection, that that connection was deeper than just the project that you were doing. That's what I, I feel like there's a thread to all of your stories. I'd like to think so. I mean, it doesn't take a rocket surgeon to realize that this industry is all about relationships. I mean, hey, there's Austin Harris. I talked to him yesterday. That, that picture's, you know, eight years old. <laughs> um, I met Austin through Zolman King. Austin's a great uh, cinematographer and camera operator. He's one of the best drone operators in the world. He's the guy who did all the baby driver stuff. All that driving stuff was all Austin. Um, and it, it's all about relationships because, you know, life's a long time. And I think too much in our industry we ignore people that have helped us or we've worked with and then we only reach out to them when we need them. And the one thing I talk about in the book is I think it's important to to exercise the Rolodex, as I call it. And that's no disrespect to anybody, but 
don't just reach out to people when you need things. Reach out at holidays or birthdays, just, you know, freaking January and August. Pick two times a year to just reach out to people for no reason so they feel a connection. Yeah. Uh, there's nothing worse. We've all been through it. The phone rings or the text comes in. You haven't heard from somebody in God knows how long. And you know they want something. Just cut to the chase, pal. But, um, <laughs> you know, I, I think relationships are key. And everything that I've had, you would know, talk about relationships with, with, you know, like Brett Michaels or Charlie or some of Zalman King, especially, were just monumental relationships in my life that have gone for 25, 30 years. I, I couldn't do it without them. Yeah. And this move, five aces right here Chris McDonald, Charlie Sheen. Right after. Great act. Uh, yeah, so, great, great stuff. That's uh, when Charlie was going through Charles. That's if you notice Charles. he was Charles Sheen for that season. Oh, was, was he Charles Sheen, right? Yeah, yeah. he was. Look at that. Charles yeah. Sheen. So funny. <laughs> um, and listen, we had, we had, like we said, we had um Tasia Telez. I know I always botch her name. Uh Steve Gutenberg was on. They were promoting the movie Break Even, yeah. uh, which came right. out um di wow. digitally back in uh in December, which December. People, people can still download. Um, when, when you, when you see a, a script, Shane, right. And it's got uh, action scenes in it. Um, do you, when you see the, the action scene from a, a director's point of view, are you, you immediately start to think in your head, you know, how's this going to go? Or, or does everybody get in a room and, and, and try to put it together, you know, as a, as a crew? Well, the real, the real people do it that way. Um, but you know, I'm an independent filmmaker, so it's, it's a very myopic process, I'll work with my writer, CJ Wally. Um, we'll talk about things. He's really production savvy and understand what he writes. There's always a way to do it. And we don't fake any of our stunts. We do uh, what we write. We do. We either have our actors do them or stunt people do them. We don't rely heavy on green screens. The only time we use green screens actually are just for boring driving scenes to control the audio and the camera. Right. Um, we just do it, but it does come from a great team uh, you know, on break even, um, we, you know, we had um, Tom McComas, who is a great uh, second unit director, and Gary Himes, who is an incredible stunt coordinator. They, you know, the boat scenes, the car chases, they just went through it piece by piece by piece. And I always tease people and say, look, you know, you get a lot of people say, hey, I want to come visit the set. And I always encourage them not to come on stunt days because they're actually very boring. You shoot one little bit at a time. And, you know, when you slug it all together, it's, a, it's an exciting car chase or a boat chase or something or a gunfight or even a fist fight. It's done over the course of 67 different angles many times over and over again. Um, and, and it's really it takes it takes a village to make it all come together. Absolutely. Well, you know what? Break evens uh, still out. And uh, let's take a look at how it all came together. Take a look. Million dollars? Rescue 50 million dollars. Anybody that stands in my path is dead already. They just don't know yet. I know how to get that drug money cleaned. It's go time. Never piss off a partner in crime. My conscience is clear. How about yours? Even though I'm a step behind, you cannot defeat me. No one else gets near them. They're mine. You know, the reason I replayed that is just because I like that quick two seconds of uh, Tazia getting thrown up against the wall in that little sex scene. <laughs> well, when we were talking about stunt scenes, that was one where we really had to. You know. <laughs> yeah, took your time on that one. Um, Grace, she was on with us. She was in Mexico. Yeah. Um, just such a great girl. And so so Steve Gutenberg came on. 
he came. So here's what happened, Shane. Steve Gutenberg came on with us the first time. Very excited. I worked all day, all day. I worked on Steve's elements and pre-production. Steve comes on to promote the movie because he's uh, he looks cool in the movie. Um, and and he he was on in a spot where the wireless was bad. He was in like the middle of Arizona, right? Arizona Suki visiting was, his parents. Yeah, yeah, visiting oh, his parents. So so for about twenty minutes, Suki and I were just laughing. He was freezing up. We said, Steve, listen, you'll come back on. Let's just kill it. You know, the show's going live. You'll, well, you'll come back on. So he came back on with us. We found another date. He came back on with us, came on to promote Break Even and talk about his career. And uh, I want to give you about a minute 15 of the second time he came on. Oh, no. take, a, take a look at how smooth it all went. This this went on for about, about another 20 minutes, but I just want to I want to give you about a minute 15. Here's the edited this. version. Yeah, yeah. Here, here you go. To the 80s raunch. I can't believe I can't hear you. He can't hear you. So, <laughs> is this true? <laughs> Uh, and his signal just cleared up beautifully for us. Yeah, it cleared on. right up. Maybe Steve needs headphones with his phone. That could be it, Sue. Um, might be more than that. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Yes. Yeah, let's just do. Come on, little guy. Why does he always freeze? Good looking, like he never goes. Oh, no. Like looks, on, he never looks strange. Suki, does this? Does this mean we won't be able to do the Steve Gutenberg movie synopsis quiz? Damn. Yeah. <laughs> Stevie G. Uh, in the place to be. He went to St. John's, John's University. <laughs> How's that, Steve? Better? No. Yeah! How are you? <laughs> Steve, when's the next date you're available to come back on? <laughs> Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, there you go. Go ahead. All right, Sue, go ahead. Keep going. His mic is muted. Yeah, Steve, your mic's muted. We get a good picture, then his mic's muted, Sue. <laughs> <laughs> you know, every day during the filming of Break Even, that kind of stuff happened. <laughs> it, it, it's great. <laughs> It was, yeah, I, thanks for sharing. I do remember that. I did get to see this. <laughs> <laughs> he was, I mean, it was just, and you know what? Some folks thought that was some of the best TV we've done all, all year. Uh, was trying to get Steve to come up and, you know, I mean, we did get a few things out of him, but it just, it wasn't happening. Um, Shane, when you look at, 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 you look at other directors, like the really big name, you saw that, that was, right? You saw that. That's the Cheeto. Cheeto. No, nah, nah. That's a, that looks, looks that's like a, a small. It's a small box. It looks like a small girl getting ready to go out to a boxing ring is what it looks like. <laughs> well, I always told Tuki said earlier, well, I have a son who comes by and steals Cheetos once in a while. But yeah, no, I, I haven't <laughs> seen him yet. He is. <laughs> she locks him up now during the show. I says. do. I lock him up. I'm like, you can't. So he, send, he sends gremlins to get the Cheetos. I get it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, what, 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 I, what I was going to say, what, you know, when you look at some of the, you know, the tremendous names, right? Scorsese, Tarantino, and Spielberg, and uh, Stanley Kubrick, um, you know, what, what is it about those guys that, you know, just catapults them into the stratosphere? Is it, is it, they, they got the opportunities for these big blockbuster movies or, you know, what was it about them that catapulted them to that superstardom director level? Do you know, that's a great question. And I, I was talking to a friend of mine about that exact thing this morning about how back in the seventies, especially, independent films were still really embraced. And if you've noticed, you know, in the last 15, 20 years, it's really, there are those independent gems that come through, but the studios have really made these glossy, big superhero movies, these $200 million films, these franchises, yeah. which, which are great, but the independent filmmaker didn't really have a place. But back in those days, their work got seen. They had, they really networked to help one another. I don't know if you've read up on the relationships like, you know, Francis Ford Coppola, Lucas and Spielberg and some of the other, there's like five or six of those guys who just had each other's back. They were their own social network. They were their own PR team. And there's a reason why almost every one of those guys out of that core made it. And I think there was just, they just made great films. People mm -hmm. enjoyed whether it was something that scared the hell out of them, like when Steven did Duel, or it was something great that Scorsese or Coppola did. I just think 
Now it seems it's more lightning in a bottle than ever. You get the Damien Chazelles that'll pop out once in a you know blue moon. But back when those guys were coming up, man, I, I really think those those filmmakers that just did gritty, awesome movies. You know, even Peter Fonda with Easy Rider, they just mm -hmm. they just popped. And um, you know, they made good films. You know, Hal Needham, big fan of his. That's somebody who went from being a stuntman to a great filmmaker, doing things like Cannibal Run and. And obviously, um, Smokey and the Bandit. Yeah, I love great movies. Great, great movies. movies. And you know, so I just, I just think there was a time where that, though, that there was an opening. I think after Easy Rider, I know this that the industry went through another change, and they were really looking for filmmakers that could tell stories that had that kind of impact. You know, Hollywood copies itself; so they're always chasing tales or yeah. the next great thing or what was that? Let's do it again and. There was a time when that film came out. I think there was really a manhunt, an all-out manhunt for great filmmakers. And and they they and God, look here we are, 40, 50 years later, and they're still going. But you know, I feel like all these digital platforms and everything like that. I feel like when I'm on all of these like paid services, I'm seeing movies that I would have never seen before ever. Absolutely. Um, and it feels like the like for young filmmakers especially, I feel like there's such an avenue for them to explore and put their craft out there. Uh, and there's so many, like my kids just, they don't, they watch it in a very strange way. I mean, you know, I, I don't think there's any, assume so differently. There's no more excuses. You know, when I was coming up, you were either in the movie theaters or you got a home video deal. Right. And mm -hmm. it's very difficult to get either one. And now you don't have an excuse. If you're an up and coming filmmaker, I trust you have a phone probably shoots in 4k. And uh, you have an edit system just about in every computer that you buy now, or it's cheap to get one. Yeah. Learn the craft and get it out there. If you're if you're as great as Spielberg or Scorsese is, people will discover it. And if you're not, just keep going. Eventually, you know, my friend Cliff always tells me, even a blind squirrel eventually bumps into a nut, you know? And yeah. mm -hmm. eventually it can happen. You just can't give up. You just got to keep doing it. But there, you're right, Suki. There are so many platforms now to get your work seen. There are so many outlets and avenues. People are used to watching movies on phones. Uh, you know, unless you're making a big studio film, you know, a lot of times you just start saying, okay, where are people going to be watching this? Let's keep it in reality. Mm -hmm. Let's keep things down to planet earth and say where most of our audience going to watch and watch on their tv their their tablet or their phone let's not shoot this thing in you know panavision or something like that because it's but, not but, the people are seeing them but covid also has you know we saw so many movies that were released right to you could just on demand you could you, right could, to you video. buy it and watch it i thought that was phenomenal actually i think it's gonna and i would pay more I think it's going to continue. And you know what's interesting is Steven Soderbergh and Mark Cuban, and I, there was somebody else, forgive me, I don't know who it was. They all got together 12, 15 years ago and said, let's do a film that released, let's start a distribution platform where their films are coming out in theaters, IMAX, home video, streaming, DVD, Blu-ray, all at the same day. And people will pay different. And they tried it, and for some reason it didn't work. But here we are in 2020. 2021 and it seems to be the norm and i think you're going to start seeing a lot more of that yeah shane listen man just a, a pleasure to have you on um the book is called what you don't learn in film school a complete guide to independent filmmaking um continued success thank I you have, uh, uh again you know if, if you're looking to do a buddy cop film uh suki <laughs> and i are you're suki and scott what is it, it it's kind it of it doesn't matter it doesn't matter it's all interchangeable <laughs> Um, you know, she could, she could be, you know, I could be the one who's always pissed off at the world and she He's could be the, the one who laughs. I am not. Right. Uh, and, I and, play, no. It's, or, or no. I have another idea for a game show host who actually commits, uh, he's a serial killer. Um, okay. but, but people think he's on TV live when he isn't while he's committing crimes. It's really, it's taped game shows. But he's right. out committing the crime, but his alibi is that he's on TV. Kind of uh, like what uh, Dennis Hopper did, what they, Keanu Reeves and uh, Sandra Bullock did to, to Dennis Hopper in Speed. Yes. With the, the video. Yes. <laughs> and then they went out and escaped. Right. Like, and they're standing there like this. <laughs> yeah, they're glitching and, you know. Like, yeah. Listen, I got to say, uh, uh, first, you know, I want to thank Patricia Lynn Wallace Rogie for the very kind comment. Thank you. Uh -huh. That's very sweet of you, dear. 
Um, but I, I really appreciate you guys having me. You know, I, I, uh, I, I'll admit I was a little bit jealous when you had Tassi and, and Steve Gutenberg on and I uh, wasn't feeling the love. I'm kidding. And it's just such an honor to be here today. Thanks for having me. And Scott, there's, a, there's his website too. It's on there in one of the comments. AMC. Uh, oh, oh, uh, 809. There you go. There it is right there. What you don't learn in film school. Look at Andrea. Andrea's on it, man. She Andrea's is on it. You can also go to shanestanley.net, but that, that'll that get you to either one. It's whatever you want. I'm easy. Beautiful. Shane, listen, man. Next movie that's coming out, you come on first and promote the hell out of that thing. Right? I would love it. And I will text Brett Michaels for you. I will text Dude. him. Yay! Yay! Text him as soon as we finish and tell him he's got to do your show. Dude, we love you. For, we'll love you forever. I'll and put if you're on the spot, dude. <laughs> we'll do it. We'll do it. And um, listen, we'll if, he, if he, Burns is, uh, has something to say to Shane from Scotland. Uh, Ooh, what? Oh, yeah. She's from Scotland, Yvonne. Let's see. What is it? Uh, let me see you on the show. Listen to your story about your movie. You're amazing. From, uh, she's wow. uh, from Scotland. So it's got to be pretty late over there right now. <laughs> We're early. Yeah. yeah. It's got to be uh, It's got to be about 2 o'clock in the morning in Scotland. So it's later oh, early, depending, on what, depending you, on what you're drinking. Um, but yeah, man, no, listen, Brett Michaels, that's, this is his audience. You know what I mean? It's, it, this is his audience. Right I'll get a text him as soon as we finish. You have my word. Beautiful. Shane, you're the man. We love you, pal. Thank you so much. Take care, Bye, everybody. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Me. Nice All right, bud. Nice Bye -bye. to meet you. Oh, uh, so gentlemen. I love great, him. Great, right? Really great. Such a nice guy. Uh, living a good life, working his butt off. And, Look at Ricky, um, Vicky Robinson. Nice seeing the people that work behind the scenes in movies. <laughs> Listen, it's not it's not easy. Do you know no, it's it not seems, at all. It seems glamorous once the movie's over, but it is not easy putting it's that stuff together. It's a tedious together. process. I mean, he saw him like every shot, every frame, yeah. editing it, post, then that's audio. I takes mean, forever. I, it takes forever. Um, Souk, uh, I, like I always say, you know, Shane would have been sufficient. We could have said goodnight, but, uh, no, this show no, rolls we... on my friend. Um, Izzy Burns is coming up. Souk, she is, uh, absolutely adorable. You're going to love Izzy. She's so cute. Um, I, I think she's 19, maybe 20 now. We'll find out. She's in Idaho. She's got a phenomenal voice. She's coming up next. I'm going to play a little something, something from her. Uh, and then we'll bring her in on the other side. Take a look. Life was a one-way street You were a stop sign I was just traveling free Walking down memory lane You think I'm broken Cause you left me But I still shine Cause I've got two feet and a lovely heart Curled my hair, got my converse on And I won't turn back, no I won't turn back Cause you can't stop me God, adorable. I think I love her. Yeah, Look, she's yeah. adorable. <laughs> Let's bring her in. Here she is. Izzy! Hey, guys. Burns! Thank you. Can you hear me all right? Oh, yeah. Izzy, we can hear you fine. Um, uh, did you did, did you know anything we were talking about with Shane Stanley? Any of those movies? Any of those people? Um, I heard Baby Driver. Did I hear Baby, Baby Driver? Baby Driver, yeah, because what's wrote, his name? Yeah. Every, all, everybody loves the, the actor, right? He's got a weird name. Well, you know his Angel name? Ansel Elgort. That's Angel it. Elgort. There you go. Yeah. yeah, he's adorable. He's gorgeous. I love him. Yeah. So funny. Right. Izzy, how are you? So you're you're in, in Moscow, Idaho? Yep, Moscow, Idaho. Wow. What's What goes on in Moscow, Idaho? Like how many people in the town? Um, I've got to say like, uh, oh gosh, this might be a little off, uh, like 50,000 people. That's good. It's pretty uh, big. I'll have to check. But, um, it would be, uh, it's called like the heart of the arts. And so it's pretty, there's a ton of artists and a ton of musicians. And, um, basically I've just grown up around such an artistically, just vibrant place. 
It's great. It's great. Population twenty three thousand eight hundred. Twenty three thousand. Yeah, I was wow. a little off. <laughs> That's but actually Moscow's that's more home than... to University of Idaho, everybody. Yep. We're really close to WSU, like 15 minutes away. So nice. And you and and Izzy, you're 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 19 or you turned 20 yet? I'm 18. Oh, you're 18. Man, I made you older than you actually were. So are <laughs> no, you I'm a senior? Oh, you're a senior in high school. You graduating. Are you are you going to college? You got a place picked out, or which one are you going to? Oh. Yeah, so um, I'm playing beach volleyball and studying music business at Colorado Mesa University. Wow. wow. Beach volleyball, beach huh? Vo yeah, it, we don't have beaches here, but I, <laughs> I play in Spokane and I've played since I was little. And so I, I'm happy to find a place where I can do both. <laughs> well, that, that yeah. also means you're, you're, you're pretty tall, aren't you? I'm 5'11". 511. So, there you go. Short so, in the athletic world. <laughs> well, Short listen, in the athletic world, but beach volleyball, how competitive you have to be. Yeah, yeah. No, it's that's so great. You're a total athlete, Izzy Burns. Not only you're an athlete, you're 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 <laughs> talented as all heck. Your music, how would you classify it? Is it like a little bit of indie rock? Is it is what what, what would it be? Um, first of all, thank you for the compliment. Um I would say I have never really like just picked a genre and just wanted to go with it. Um, but I'm definitely a lot of folk, a lot of indie. And so I, I usually say indie folk, but I have been getting into like, I've grown up singing jazz music too. So it's a little bit of everything, just depending on the song. I love it. Do your friends, do your friends call you is, do they shorten that up a little bit or no? A lot of people do. Yeah. They did it call family. you is, right? Um, is it short for Isabel? Mm -hmm. Isabel Burns. Yeah. Yep. Izzy, Isabel, and Iz. Yep. I love it. <laughs> never um, called Isabel though. <laughs> no, never Isabel. Izzy, do you want to um we'll talk some more? You want it you want to hit a quick song while we're uh yeah. hang, hanging out in your living room? Totally. I'm actually <laughs> at a friend's house because I have two dogs that bark a lot. But, oh, and okay. that just yeah, this is my friend's house. I love, <laughs> I love it. it. What's what song Say do you want? Friend for us. <laughs> um, I'm thinking. I think I might do my most successful song right now, um, with my numbers and everything. Uh it's called Autopilot. Oh, okay. That's um this one. Yeah. Um, so this was the second song I ever wrote. Um yeah, here it is. Go ahead, light it up. Don't you let them steal your name. 
make a sound with their voices of silence. So talented, Izzy. That's crazy. It's just crazy. Thank you. Good. Very Aww. nice. Very nice. Our uh, our audience loving it. Wow. Aww. Izzy, Thank Izzy you. is. That's just saying, Izzy, you're just so beautiful, so ethereal, you know, your look is just, it's just so effortless. Yeah, Aww. Izzy, it's kind of, it's kind of not fair, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you should have seen Scotty and I at the age of 17. We were uh, next, we were it's, messes. It's, Izzy, don't make me bust out my 15-year-old camp picture, Soup. Don't oh, make do me it. go into do Izzy. It. You want to see what Scott looks like at 15 uh, years old Izzy, in don't, Izzy, don't make I me mean, do it. This is Izzy. 1980s, Izzy, you ready? <laughs> I think I was a, a, a junior in high school then. Is that was only uh, wow. uh, almost forty years ago? <laughs> I was gonna say, <laughs> yeah, not, not yeah. Well, Suki and I are only in our thirties, so it's not even yeah. possible. Um, yeah. Do you have Do you have a boyfriend in high school? I do. Um, actually, he's not in high school. He's a fresh, like a freshman in college. So. Oh, he's already in college. Not the one you're yeah. the one you're going to. Um, no, he oh, is okay. at the, he's going to the U of I, um, and I'm, so yeah, it's like 14 hours away. That's Ooh. okay. Wow. Okay. <laughs> All right. Listen, hopefully you guys will be able to stay together, but, Listen. uh. Are, are you guys going to have a prom and graduation and all of that stuff? Is that going to happen? So, you know, the crazy thing about Idaho is, I mean, I'm very fortunate that I live in a part that is so um considerate of like everyone's health and they follow the rules but since we followed the rules so well in moscow we've been having a lot less rates for covid and so we nice. were actually able to have a prom last oh, weekend oh, oh, and beautiful. it was so much fun i had such really? a great time <laughs> oh, i wish we uh, had so i wish i found some of those pictures online i know we want to see your prom I picture <laughs> i could email you one <laughs> Well, it's too late by then. Yeah, it uh, is a bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, what? I'm uh, super what, lucky. Yeah. No, is listen, and, and are, when you go to college, is there? I don't know. I know you said uh, the beach volleyball. Is there a good music program at that school? Yes, also? there's. A, yes, there definitely is. Um, and I think it's so cool that music business is becoming so much more popular because. I mean, I, I love being an artist, but I also want to have the skills to be able to be a good artist and promote myself beyond just yeah. being a good musician. And so... Like Jay-Z said, right? It's a business, you know? I'm a businessman. Yeah. And what, so did he say? I, what did he say that was very profound? I'm a bit... <laughs> I think he, Suk, I think he said I got 99 problems. No, what? no, no. That Oh, that wasn't he it? He said something like, it's a, like, I'm a, like, get to know the business because you're a businessman. I don't know, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. B -I -B -I -Z -N -I -S. B -I -Z -N -I -S. B-I-Z-N-I-S. B-I-Z-N-I-S. Business? It is. <laughs> That's a business. Uh, but you're right. You're right. It is a business, Izzy, and you got to know yeah. and sign your checks and know where all your money is going and who's got your records or whatever. Poor yep. Taylor Swift. What is that called? The originals. Yeah. Well, yep. The originals. Royalties listen, your your next album, your, the the next the title of your next album could be it's an isness <laughs> instead of business. Ain't no hashtag, do, hashtag isness. Isness. <laughs> I love, I, I love puns. I like that. Instaful. <laughs> what else? Can you, what other? What other hashtags could you come up with, Scotty? Oh, uh, the is, the is kid instead of the whiz kid. Is kid. <laughs> it's not bad, right? Um, it, it is what it is. It it is what it is. Oh, that's even better. Leave it. Leave it to the young kids. There to you have go. Their hashtags. It, it oh, is what it is. I love you it. You and I suck at hashtags. <laughs> ah, listen. I gotta, I gotta look it all up, Sook. So. Um, Izzy, sure. you want to do it? You want to do another tune? Yeah, totally. Um, so that autopilot was from my first album, and I'm going to play you uh, um, one from my second album, and it's from the album A Heartbeat of Your Time. This one, my friend and I, Max Salo, he made a music video for it, he's phenomenal. Um, it's called Broken Compass. Beautiful. Oh, Broken Compass, okay. Don't know where I'm going, but I'm going far. Got a broken compass. 
and I won't get tired. Living on the run, but I'm running out of time. Drowning in the silence as I walk the line. He wanted me to stay, he should have told me so. Instead of riding me off to the cold unknown. So if I'm gonna go anywhere, gotta let the sunshine leave it. You gotta stay and I gotta go, cause home's no place to feel alone. So if I'm gonna go anywhere, I gotta get out of here. This highway life gets heavy, I can't see shit. When my feet turn along the ground, the rising's keeping me about. If you wanted me to stay, you should have told me so. Instead of riding me off to the cold unknown. So if I'm gonna go anywhere, gotta let the sunshine leave me there. You gotta stay and I gotta go. I love that song. I love the sentiment of the song. I love everything about that song. That Thank is you. a beautiful song. Who Thank you so um much. did you did you write that together or you wrote that song? Who wrote that song? Um I I have read, I wrote it, yeah. That's wow. an old guitar. Wow, look at You that. wrote it and then you put it and you put it to the music. Yeah. That is unbelievable. Wow is yeah, wow. I it all started with that little like guitar lick thing. And then um yeah, my producer Milad Abid at Gonzaga University, he kind of helped me put it together. And it was a big quarantine project. And I kind of wrote it about graduating and moving on with my life and just kind of looking forward in a time where there kind of wasn't a lot to do. And so um it was so fun making the video. We made it in like January, Max Salo and I did. And um, he, uh, it was just a really cool video because we had clips of me just growing up and playing music. And so it's, so a, it's a really special song for me. I love your, it. Um, I love it, Izzy. Yeah, for your next you album. Just like you. you just, yeah, well, Sook, she could take so from sweet. Stevie Wonder. Her Thank next you. album could be, Isn't She Lovely? <laughs> Isn't she lovely? There you go. Izzy, yes, I won't charge is. you. We won't charge you for any of this. Um, are there are there are there puns. are there current covers that you like to do? Like a current song that's that's on the radio yes. all the time? Which one's your um, favorite? Oh gosh. Uh current, I mean I'm a big oldies person in my oh, gigs. That's uh, us. Go ahead. Let's see. Beatles. Um oh. I also my, I guess my favorite current band, which isn't quite current anymore, would be the Lumineers. Oh, okay. oh I love the love Lumineers. Their music. They're my favorite band. I just oh, love them so many times a concert. We love them. Oh, I'm so right. jealous. I give want to Sook, see them. Okay. Give, give Sook a Lumineers. Go ahead. All right, go ahead. Okay. <laughs> so this is their version of Where the Skies Are Blue. Oh, beautiful song. Mama, I've never seen nobody quite like you. So if you ever change your tune and you're looking for someone new, you can always find me where the skies are blue. Want it to change, turn into what you love, Mama. I would engage all the best to you. So if you ever need a fool, who will give you a love so 
true You can always find me where the skies are In your head, you don't gotta flee. Somebody's brand new love, mama. Who's got to feel the like it always do? Your fairy tale is through, and you're looking for someone new. You can always find me where the skies are blue. Always find me where the skies are blue. Wow. Beautiful. Thank you. All right, Is. Listen, now before before you go, now you gotta hit me with a little Beatles. Oh, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Let's do this. Go ahead. Any song you want, little Beatles action. Okay. I find myself in times of trouble Mother Mary comes to me Speaking words of wisdom, let it be And in my hour of darkness <laughs> I might get the words wrong She is standing right in front of me Speaking words of wisdom, let it be Let it be, let it be, let it be, let it be I don't have the words memorized, so it's beautiful. You did enough. It's beautiful. Totally get it. <laughs> totally you. get it. And in my hour of darkness, That's his oh, yeah, she is you know standing. One of the that was written about like the Virgin Mary, but it's actually written about his mother. His mom. Yeah. yeah. Really? Yeah. I I love the Beatles because I mean. John Lennon and I have the same birthday, October 9th. Oh, really? We have a connection. I'm kidding. Uh, but um, I, I've always loved the Beatles. Cool. Awesome. Yeah. Izzy, thank you so much. You're, you're amazing. Thank you, Byrne. So talented. Um, thank listen, you. Keep doing what you're doing, young lady. And uh, before you know it, you'll be a, a famous singer-songwriter. And you're, uh -huh. you're, already, you're already on your way. Izzy, thank you're, you so you're having a fantastic having summer. I mean, this is it. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. And listen, I don't want you outside this summer. I want you writing songs. I want you working hard. No playing around this I'm summer. already doing that. <laughs> <laughs> Izzy, Thank take, you so much. Take care, sweetie. Such a pleasure to have you. Thank you. Bye. Bye, -bye. Bye Izzy Burns from Moscow, Idaho. <laughs> She's great, Sook, right? Oh, my God. She it's like our kids are miserable and awful human <laughs> beings when you compare them to children that grow up in other places. <laughs> That's what I thought to myself. I was like, look at this girl. She's just like kind, she's so, talented. She's so happy. Not jaded, angry. Wow. Oh, my God. She's just, uh, I mean, speaking of jaded and angry. Mm. Hey, <laughs> what's happening everybody uh phil did you hear her doing those songs just now oh my gosh was it is she angelic oh my lord How, yeah you know to think that there's even people so with that much beauty and that much talent yeah and you can tell she's just got a a good heart a good soul you yeah. know and, and you see people like that and they sing and they touch your heart and you think there's hope for humanity. <laughs> you know? There's hope for the rest of us. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Aye, oh, aye, my aye. God. She was, uh, I love the Beatles, too. And she was really good. She should let do a little bit more be, Beatles covers. I mean, she they, 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 they would go viral. Philly, yes. listen, uh, we have a direct line now to Shane Stanley, the uh, the filmmaker. So anything you want to oh. cry out for? Oh, hey. <laughs> I've got yes. Listen, before Suki goes, just give her your uh, give her your Narcos guy from last night. Yeah, give a little <laughs> give Suki give Su Suki. You don't know what you're missing it from eight thirty to nine. Yeah, give, this is give, give Suki your uh, your your cocaine. This is Narcos. Guy. Yeah, yeah. This is ahead. you know if they if they produce another Narcos series, I want I want to be in it. So I auditioned last night. Oye, Rodriguez, 
No te llegue pendejo. Dame respeto o comienza la guerra. <laughs> that actually made sense, Billy. That was wonderful. <laughs> so, what do you say? What do you say? He goes, "Oye, pendejo," which is a no, bad I know word, what, right? What, what do you say in English? <laughs> he said, uh, "If you don't give him respect, the war will begin." Yes, ah, you yes. little monkey. You want to go to war with me? <laughs> oh, that's All so right. funny. Uh, listen, guys, big before you go, Sook, Monday afternoon, everybody, one o'clock in the afternoon on the East Coast. We got Joey Fatone coming on, Chris Ruggiero. And uh, Phil. And Phil will be here. It's be like a normal show, just at one o'clock on a Monday. And uh, we're gonna pretend we're gonna ask Joey Phil all questions that are have to do with Justin Timberlake and see. Uh, Absolutely, see Phil. Get ready for that. Yeah. <laughs> He might Should hang he... up on us. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I said. So funny. Uh, all right, Philly hey, kid, it's time for a little OT. See you, Sookie. Love you. Love you guys. See you, See you later. Bye. Uh, Phil, she uh, – that Izzy is, was so – she was so so good. And so, I mean, the oh. eight, I wish I was 18 again. I would go back to the – to the electric guitar, the piano. I was I was taking lessons on everything, and I let it all go, Phil. Yeah, I mean, golly, I let she it was, all go away. She was fantastic. You know, we a lot of times we sit back and go, "Man, I wish I could just do this time over in my life. I, w- I would have yeah. done, I would have done this, or I would have done that." And uh, but you know, that's that's human nature. Yeah, no, I I know, I know, and I just uh, I mean, you know. You know, she, it's one of those things where you wonder if she keeps going, where she'll end up with her music, if she'll ever get discovered. If she, because a lot of people like just like her, but not everybody can't be discovered. Everybody can't be on the radio. But again, in this day and age, there's so many ways to make your own way. Right. Uh, when it comes to entertainment, <laughs> you know, you you wonder. You, I'd love to look twenty years from now to see, you know, where she is. And what happens to Izzy Burns as far as her music career? Because she's, I mean, she's really good. That's that's right. That's the thing right there, you know. And, and that's uh, that's one of the great things about living in this country is, you know, for I'll I will use me as an example. Go ahead. Go I, ahead. Uh, okay, uh, forty years in the military and as a cop, and one day I pull over and I record a song in my scout car. And right. it, it gets <laughs> right. it gets eight million views. Right <laughs> now, and I don't play any instruments. I just like to sing and and, and be funny. Yeah, and, and, and you know, so you're right. And that's one of the great things about living in this country. You can if you you can make things happen for yourself. You know, and and you have the opportunities. So, and uh, Phil, um, can you give us a little bit of that song that you went viral with, please? Oh, I'm easy like Sunday morning. I know it sounds funny, but I just can't stand the pain. Girl, I'm leaving you tomorrow. Everybody wants me to be what they want me to be. I'm not happy when I try to fake it. No, 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 no. That's why I'm easy. Oh, I'm easy like Sunday morning. That's why I'm easy. I'm easy like Sunday morning. I want to be high, so high. Phil, I got a surprise for you. All right. Lay it uh, on me. I love surprises. I wasn't done listening to Izzy. I just wasn't done. I, I needed a little more. She hit us with a little Beatles. Yes. And, uh, you know, it's we're in the OT. Um, you know, Sook goes to take care of her kids. Right. You and I sing it up. So I thought maybe if we can get Izzy back here, let's see if she can if she can undo her microphone. Iz, can you undo yes. the microphone? <laughs> There you Hi. are. You got it. Hi, Izzy. Yes, we're all good. Is it? It's good. How's it you, going? Still, you still have your guitar with you? Is this is Phil, by the way? Hi, Izzy. And we, and we were just talking. I was. I was saying to Phil. You know, I, I'd love to see where Izzy's going to be twenty years from now. Whether she's a whether she's a you know a big big singer somewhere because not everybody can get famous or get big. But then we said nowadays, 
you know, with the way things are going, you make your own way, you make your own albums, your, your own digital uh, stuff. And then Phil said, you know, look, Phil has a gazillion followers on his social media. He went viral. Uh -huh. Phil, tell her, tell her what Phil was a, a police officer in Oklahoma. And Phil, yeah. tell her, tell her what happened one day. Yeah, I was just driving around. You know, I like to sing. I was coming home from work, actually. And uh, I had this little app on my phone I downloaded where you could like sing little karaoke type songs. And uh, I pulled over in, into a parking lot and I sang Easy. You know, give her a little, give her a little bit. Uh, go ahead, Philly. Give her a little bit. Because I'm easy like Sunday morning. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, I, you know, in my cop car, I recorded it. And I, uh, I put it on my uh, Facebook page and I got about, well, it's up to like 12 million views now. But uh, yeah, so oh, he was on everybody's yeah. talk show. It's like, hey, there's this, <laughs> there's this singing cop. You got to hear him. He's unbelievable. Amazing. He yeah, was one, but, of the, but, one of our first guests and he he became our musical director. He's 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 on our show every night with us. He's he's our uh, he's our guy. Yeah, but the That's point crazy. is, you know, I, I was telling Scott, I said, you know, with with I don't even have talent. I don't play any instruments or anything. But with your talent, I mean, with you, you play instruments and you have a great heart and and you have, you know, you, you're you're very pretty. You you can do it. You can do it. I mean, and so I'm I'm rooting for you. Make it happen. Oh, I'm trying. <laughs> I know you are. I know you are. So so in in our overtime. Once our real show is over, Phil and I hang out. We, we, I even sing a little bit. He sings. All his his fans love when he hangs out and sings. Mm -hmm. But I, I need I needed to just hear like one or two more from you. Um, maybe a little more Beatles. It doesn't have to be the whole song. <gasps> okay. And then I'll let you go for the night. You're probably like, oh, this guy's killing me. Okay. You but then Beatles? give me like, give me, give me like a, one more beat or even like an oldies tune. You said you'd like to do a lot of oldies. Yes, I do. Um, do you, okay. This is CCR's Have You Ever Seen the Rain? Does that sound ah, good? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yes. Okay. I want to know. Go yeah, ahead. Yeah. Yeah. It's a little different. <laughs> Someone told me long ago. To come before the storm, I know, and it's been coming for some time. When it's over, so they say it'll rain a sunny day. I know, shining down like water. Do you um? Do you know? Do you know? You know? You know any Bob Seger? I don't. Any Bob? Oh, I was gonna say because just because today's his birthday, but it's no big deal. Oh, um, I was gonna say you know who Willie Mays is? No. Uh, it's his birthday too. It's okay. No big deal. <laughs> um, big baseball player. You know who George Clooney is? Yes. It's his birthday today too. <laughs> wow. Happy See, birthday. even the young ones know who George Clooney is. So. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, who doesn't? Um, all right, as listen, give me a little bit of one more oldie, and then we'll and then we'll let you off the hook. Okay. Which one you like? What uh, do you like? Oh, I'm thinking uh, something you know something that all us old folks would love to hear. Songs for the seventies, eighties. She's like songs for old folks. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, I mean, you, you could go another Beatles tune if you like. I'm gonna do "Walking After Midnight." I'm just midnight chords. I'm looking this up. Nice. Because that's all right. I want to buy chords. <laughs> um, Moscow has this um, jazz festival called the Lionel Hampton Jazz Festival at the U of I, and I I like to play in it, and I sing this sometimes. Go ahead. I go out walking after midnight out in the moonlight. Just like we used to do, I'm always walking after midnight searching for you. I walk 
walk for miles along the highway. Well, that's just my way of saying I love you. I'm always walking after midnight searching for you. I stopped to see a weeping willow crying on his pillow. Maybe he's crying for me. And as the sky so gloomy, night winds whisper to me, I'm lonesome as I can be. I go out walking out, walking out, walking out after midnight, out in the moonlight. Cause that's just my way, my way, my way of saying I love you. Woo! That's older than you wanted. But... <laughs> yeah, that's older than no. us. Uh, that's, is, I listen, love that. when you when you go to college and you start playing beach volleyball, we want some video of you playing ball. Okay. And then we're gonna we'll do a little we'll do a little where is Izzy now, and I we want to I would want to follow you. Send me some video so I could play it for Suki and Phil and everybody, and we, this way we'll know how we'll know how you're doing. Sounds no, we great. need to we need to have her back on the show because hey, hey Izzy, this is you know this show Suki and Scott show. A lot of people don't realize that we actually have viewers around the world. Mm. Wow. So yeah, yeah, not not only send us the video, but please come back to the show. I yeah, would love yeah. to. <laughs> yes, <laughs> Izzy, take care, sweetie. Thank you so much for coming back on, and uh, good luck in school, sweetie. Great to meet you, Phil. <laughs> Same here. Take care. Take care. Bye. <laughs> oh man! Wow. Great, right? She, right Phil? she is good. Yes, she is oh, awesome. Wow, uh, all right, listen, man. Pressure's back on you. Back on you. What do you want to do? A little? Did you? Is there? Did you do anything to celebrate Bob Seger's birthday? Um, I put a song up uh, that I did a Bob Seger song. I put it up uh, right before the show. Oh, you and, did? Uh, Which one? Yeah. Uh, Turn the page. Oh, I so, love that tune. You have that on your page. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's up right now. It's uh, it's doing pretty good. Um, but uh, yeah, Bob Seger's birthday. You know, May 6, nineteen forty five. He is seventy six years old today. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, I was I was uh, checking some things out on on uh, on Bob Seger today. And uh, did you know that you can only get Bob Seger music online now? Oh, really? Yeah. You can't even get uh, you can't well, buy CDs or anything. Apparently, they just took those old records off the shelf. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I, I understand also that he is a, a chess master. Uh -huh. You know, he's he, he's always he's always working on his night moves. <laughs> working on a night move. You know, I actually uh, when I was in L.A. one time, I uh, actually uh, went into the same restaurant as Bob Seger and. Uh, he was sitting at the table right next to me. He was uh, and he was ordering and he said, hey, I don't see the desserts on here. And the waitress said, turn the page. <laughs> here I am <laughs> on the road again. That's how we opened up the show. <laughs> boy, Phil, I got... <laughs> and my allergies are working today. Boy, I look like crap, huh? My eyes are very red and glassy. <laughs> I think you look good. A lot of pollen over here in this uh, in this area of the country. Yeah, same here. I I've got uh, a spray called what is it called? Flonase. I use it oh, every yeah, day. Flonase. Yeah, and I I use it every day. <laughs> yeah, it may or may not have a little white powder mixed in. I don't, you know, I don't. That's what <laughs> they told me. It's called. <laughs> it's got a little baking soda, man. Uh, all right, baby. Let's bang out a few tunes. Let's do it. Yeah, I'll. Uh, in fact, I'll do. Uh, turn the page right now. Are you join? You joining us on Monday? You'll be able to make that. Yes. Beautiful. Yes. Beautiful. Yeah. It's Joey, be a good show. Joey Fatone coming up on Monday. The show is at one o'clock live. Obviously, if you can't make it live, if you're working, you have things to do, uh, which we don't apparently. Um, <laughs> you could watch, you know, it'll be up on the page. You don't have to turn the page. It'll be up there. Right. Uh, and then uh, the show will be there for the rest of eternity. So, uh, but we'd love to see you yeah. guys there live one o'clock on Monday. Sweet. See you there. Um, so anyway, a little uh, turn the page action. <clears throat> On a long and lonesome highway east of Omaha, 
You can listen to the engine moaning out as one note song. You can think about the woman or the girl you knew the night before. But your thoughts will soon be wandering the way they always do when you're riding 16 hours and there's nothing much to do and you don't feel much like riding you just wish the trip was through say here i am on the road again there i am up on a stage here i go playing the star again there i go turn the page will you walk into a restaurant strung out from the road and you feel the eyes upon you as you're shaking off the cold and you pretend it doesn't bother you but you just want to explode. Most times you hear them talk, and other times you can't. Oh, the old same cliches. Is that a woman or a man? And you always seem outnumbered. You don't dare make your stand. Say, here I am on the road again there i am up on the stage here i go playing the star again there i go there i go turn the page bam Love it. I, that's one of my favorite songs. Oh, of all times. Of yeah, all yeah. times. Well, you walk into a restaurant, strung out from the road. So that's a good just cruising in your car song. Got a blast, nice day. You just got the windows open, the yeah. top down if you have a convertible. Yeah, and it's just so 70s because I can remember in the 70s when, yeah. when when people would actually like see people with long hair and say, is that a man or a woman, you know, or is that a boy or a girl? Yeah. You see them from behind, you pull up, you're like, wow, that's a good looking. <laughs> no, sorry, <laughs> keep going. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. But uh, see, yeah. Bob Seeger's, uh, how old is he? 70? 76. 76. Wow. Yeah, that's amazing. Love to have yeah. him on, man. Oh my gosh! You know he was on. I saw him on a Good Morning America. Oh, I don't know, a couple of months ago, and the guy is. I mean, he's still still flowing. I, yeah, yeah. I wouldn't have thought he was over fifty-five or sixty years old. That's wild. What a good yeah. career. <clears throat> Very. I'm gonna, I'm gonna stay on Shane. I want to get uh, Brett Michaels on the show too. That would be great yeah. to have him yeah. on, right? Yeah, that guy's hilarious. Every rose has its thorn. Hey, you mentioned the Beatles earlier. Uh, yeah. So I also got a re request for this <clears throat> on Facebook. So I'm going to sing a little I Want to Hold Your Hand in a sexy Oh, verse. yeah. I... Go ahead, Philly. Oh, yeah. I'll tell you something I think you'll understand. When I say that something, I want to hold your hand. I want to hold your hand. I want to hold your hand. Oh, please say to me, you'll let me be your man. And please say to me, You'll let me hold your hand. You'll let me hold your hand. I want to hold your hand. And when I touch you, I feel happy inside. It's such a feeling that my love, 
I can't hide. Oh, yeah, you got that something I think you'll understand. When I say that something, I want to hold your hand. And when I touch you, I feel happy inside. It's such a feeling that my love. I can't hide. 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 And when I touch you. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, I want to, you know what? I want to be, I want to be Shane Stanley in another life. I want to come back and I want to direct movies. Man, it's got to be cool doing some action films, people exploding and working with The Rock and all kinds of stuff. Yeah, man. I want to audition for that guy. Wow. <laughs> oh, Phil, Phil, we got the inside line, dude. I got Sweet. you covered. I got you covered. <laughs> Sweet. I could, uh, like that one casting director said, uh, lose the psycho eyes or easy, <laughs> yeah. ease up on the psycho eyes. I want to, I want to find a producer that will, you know, appreciate, appreciate my psycho eyes. Yeah. Let me see him. <laughs> Let me see the psycho eyes. Go ahead. No, te haga pendejo. <laughs> I love how one, you got kind of like a one lazy one going the other way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, uh, Cherry Hetrick says we need a duet. Okay. Um, what would you, let's do one we've never done before. We've never, you know, I have these cards from Big Trick Energy, and I still uh, uh, they're not doing any tricks for me, Phil. I thought maybe right. they do tricks by themselves, but they don't. <laughs> you mean you you have to you, you have to manipulate them? They didn't yeah, tell you yeah, that. You really, you have to actually do something. Uh, <laughs> I do know a couple card tricks, but nothing that would work on the uh, on on the air. Uh, right. What do you want to sing? What do you want to sing? Come on, let's Philly. do. Let's uh, hey, let's let's try. Uh, Which let's one? try some. Let's try some old time rock and roll. Take those old records off the shelf. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Every Let time I hear I'm... that song, though, it just makes me think of uh, Tom Cruise and his undies. <laughs> well, you know, I think of Tom Cruise in his undies just about every, every day. day. Every day, anyway. Just, <laughs> okay, you start it off. Just take those old records. Just take those old records off the shelf. Uh. I'll sit and listen to them by myself. Mm -hmm. Today's music ain't got the same soul. I like that old time rock and roll. Uh, Don't try uh, to take me to a disco. No. You'll never even get me out on the floor. In 10 minutes, I'll be late for the door. I like that old time rock and roll. Take it, Scotty. Oh, still like that old time rock and roll. That kind of music just soothes my soul. I reminisce about the days of old with that old time of rock and roll. I'm going to hear a play a tango. I'd rather hear some blues or funky old soul. There's only one sure way to get me to go. Start playing old time of rock and roll. Ah. Call me a relic, call me what you will. Say I'm old fashioned, say I'm over the hill. Today's music ain't got the same soul. I like that old time of rock and roll. Ah, oh, still like that old time of rock and roll. That kind of music just soothes the soul. Woo. I reminisce about the days of old with that old time of rock and roll. Come on, Ow. Philly, take us home, baby. Still like that old time of rock and roll. The kind of music just soothes my soul. I reminisce about the days of old with that old time of rock and roll. Still like that old time of rock and roll. The kind of music just soothes my soul. I reminisce about the days of old with that old time of rock and roll. Yeah. Oh, nice. Nice. Uh, big Mother's Day coming up on uh, Sunday, Phil. Got your Mother's Day, your basic Mother's Day. 
Yeah. I, don't forget, uh, fellas. Hey, if there if there are any fellas watching, don't forget Mother's Day. Uh, you want to see what I uh, what I bought, Suki? Yeah, Mother's Day. I I, I got her one of these. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I uh, with with this card, Philly. <laughs> <laughs> That reminds me of a story back from when I was a cop. I can't tell it on the air, but remind me later. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh boy. All right. Come on. We got we got a couple more tunes. We got at least two more. Do, 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 I think do, our do. I think our viral video with uh knock three times, we're we're almost up to 590. Uh, not 590, 790. 790. 790,000. So, I'd like to see that get to 800,000. That'd be pretty cool. Yeah. I want to see a million. Um, let me tell you who we have on next week, people. We got some good guests coming up. Uh, so, again, on Monday, we got Joey Fatone, Chris Ruggiero. That's a one o'clock show on Monday, a very yes. special Monday one o'clock show. Nice. Uh, then on Tuesday, we had Broadway singer Meredith Patterson. We have uh, Harlan Coben coming on. He is a book and movie writer. He's got about four movies on Netflix right now. Dang. Uh, yeah. The guy's like a suspense thriller writer. Yeah. Uh, we got Phil Rosenthal, who created Everybody Loves Raymond, is coming up soon. Yeah, Ray uh, Romano. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, guys. Um. <laughs> Michael Thomas Higgins, who has been in many movies, he's now a uh, he hosts um, America Says on uh, the Game Show Network. Uh, if you saw him, you would know exactly who I'm talking about. Uh, Eric Roberts is coming up later in the month. Nice. Uh, Vincent Pastor, who played Big Puss on uh, The Sopranos, is coming up. Um, Eugenia Kuzmina is a, uh, a, a, an amazing actress. She's coming up. So we got a lot of things, a lot of things happening. So, yeah, you know, it's, it, it, it's amazing to me, you know, the list of a list celebrities, oh, a list, a list, so. a list that, that, that are, you know, f flocking to the show, flocking yeah. to the Suki and Scott show. Yeah. And, and you know, and. It's a worldwide audience, and they're just flocking to the flocking. Suki and Scott show. They're flocking. I can't stop the show if I wanted to, Phil. If I no. said tomorrow, Philly kid, we got to stop the show, I'd have to call 1,500 people to let them know they're not coming on the show in May and June. So I, just, right. I, can't, I can't even stop. And there would be a huge backlash. There'd be know? a backlash. Where, where do all these people go to promote their stuff? Where do young, talented singers go to be exposed to the mass audiences? I don't and know. Yet, to be, to be, to expose themselves to a worldwide audience, worldwide. which is, which is what Suki and Scott has a worldwide audience, as does uh, your personal page as well. An even bigger I mean, worldwide audience. You know, we do what we can. We do what we can. <laughs> <laughs> uh let's see what else what else do we want to do give me another one philly kid okay here here's one let's let's try to do this one i'll i'll start it off it's called like a rock another bob seger tune oh no like a rock all i that's a chevrolet commercial yeah <laughs> you may have to do that one by your by your lonesome um yeah because yeah because the only part of that song i know philly is like a rock <laughs> <laughs> so you did okay. you Solo that one up. Go ahead. Okay. Stood there boldly, sweating in the sun. Felt like a million, felt like number one. The height of summer, I've never felt that strong. Like a rock. I was 18, didn't have a care. Working for peanuts, not a dime to spare. But I was lean and solid everywhere, like a rock. My hands were steady, my eyes were clear and bright. My walk had purpose, my steps were quick and light. And I held firmly 
to what I felt was right, like a rock, oh, like a rock, I was strong as I could be, like a rock, nothing ever got to me, like a rock, I was something to see, like a rock. I remember those days when I felt like a rock. Like a rock, yeah. Now you use a little blue pill, don't you? <laughs> yeah, you know, <laughs> you got to do what you got to do. Uh, you get to that certain age and all of a sudden... Things just, you know, have no control over it. So. Yeah, you, just, you know, you got to, you know, you make sure you stand up before you flush. Just a... um, there was one I was going to bring up. Hold on. Let's see. Huh, huh, huh. Let me tell you about my best friend. Uh, I don't know what it is that makes me love you so. I only know I never uh, want to let you go because you started you something. something. Can't, can't you, see? you see that ever since we met, you got a hold on me. It happens yeah. to be true. I only want to be with you. Little Bay City Rollers, Philly. It doesn't matter where you go or what you do. I want to spend each moment of the day with you. Look what has happened with just one kiss. <laughs> I, never I never knew that I could be in love like this. It's crazy, but it's true. I only want to be with you. You stopped and smiled at me and asked if I cared to dance. I fell into your open arms and I didn't stand a chance. Scotty. Now listen, honey, I just want to be beside you everywhere. As long as we're together, honey, I don't care. Because you started something, plan to see. That ever since we met, you got a hold on me. No matter what you do, I only want to be with you. Uh, nah, nah, no matter, no matter what you do, I only want to be with you. Boom, boom. <laughs> can't sing with allergies and not cough yeah that sucks they had two other big songs one of course was uh saturday night a saturday night i i i i i just can't wait and then their other song was um money honey you ain't got no despair i like a fraction just to see what you can get right remember that song money yeah honey. oh yeah 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 <laughs> like, saturday night was the was the big one i remember oh most. yeah yes. gonna gonna keep on dancing to the rock and roll on saturday, saturday night. night saturday night dancing to the rhythm in our heart and soul on saturday night Saturday night. Take it, Scotty. I, 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 I just can't wait. I, 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 I got a day. At the good old rock and roll folk, folk show. show. I've got to go. go. Saturday, Saturday night. Saturday night. Saturday night. Gonna rock it up, roll it off, do it all. Have a ball Saturday night. Saturday night. Take it, Philly. I'm going to sneeze. Gonna dance with my baby till the night is through on Saturday night, Saturday night. Tell her all the little things I'm gonna do on Saturday night, Saturday night. I, 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 I love her so. I, I, I'm gonna let her know. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> you know, I, I remember distinctly when they came out and, uh, they were talking like they were going to be the next Beatles. Oh, and uh, that failed dismally. They uh, let's see if can I share this? Let's see if I could share this page. They were. Um, oh, no, I, I still don't know. I, I always forget how to do it. Allow. Now I can't get no, I can't get out of it, Phil. I can't get out of the whole thing. God dang it. Uh, uh Okay, let me just get let me just do this and get back to you every day. 
Good eyes crying in the rain. Mm-hmm. I'll sing one while you're doing that. In the twilight glow, I see blue eyes crying in the rain. When we kiss goodbye and parted, I knew we never meet again. Love is like a dying ember, only memories remain. And through the ages I'll remember Blue eyes crying in the rain. Did you figure it out? I'm back, though. I lost my <laughs> I lost my camera. Everything. I'm back. Um, do you remember that song? Uh, uh, please baby go all the way by the raspberries yeah remember that song uh till she kissed me and said please baby go all the way feel so right being with you here to please baby go I, it's like i can't get the tune in my head but it was such a big song in, back in the day yeah please baby go all the way i philly kid you want to uh i give you the floor one final solo of the week what's it gonna be my friend oh well i had a i had several requests for this one for the show tonight uh little elvis presley and are you lonesome tonight Are you lonesome tonight? Do you miss me tonight? Are you sorry we drifted apart? Does your memory stray to a brighter sunny day? When I kissed you and called you sweetheart Do the chairs in your parlor Seem empty and bare Do you gaze at your doorstep And picture me there Is your heart filled with pain? Shall I come back again? Tell me, dear, are you lonesome tonight? Is your heart filled with joy, pain? Will I drive you insane? Tell me, dear. Oh, you know what? What's that? Uh, we were asking Izzy for her prom picture, so she just she just sent it over to us. <laughs> there's, <laughs> there's there's Izzy on her on at her prom. <laughs> nice, so cute, such a pretty girl. Yeah, yeah. She's uh, my do- my older daughter's her age. I love it. Yeah, I wish yeah, my kid. I wish she was playing a guitar and singing like that. Hey, all you got to do is string that one behind you, and you know, pay for some lessons. <laughs> I know, man. I know. Uh, don't remind me, Phil. <laughs> it's just a reminder of my failed youth. <laughs> uh, anyway, listen, everybody. We'll uh, we'll be back on uh, on Monday, one o'clock p.m. here in the East. Whatever that translates to where everybody is, uh, tw- that's uh, 12 o'clock Eastern, uh, uh, 12 o'clock Central, 11 o'clock Mountain, 10 o'clock Pacific time. 
Yes. Uh, and we'll uh, we'll see everybody on Monday. Have a great weekend, Phil. Are we um are we up for a little uh, a little car duet over the weekend? I assume. Yeah, we're gonna have to make it happen. We're gonna have to All make right. it happen. All right. Might have to be. Was it that? Do we do that song? I recommend it. I feel like that's a hit for us. Yeah. Let's uh let's keep it under our hats and uh. All right. And we'll surprise everybody with it. All right. Yeah. 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 Other than that, everybody, great show tonight. Shane Stanley. Philly Kid, uh, Izzy Burns, Souk, uh, so much happening. Big phone calls tomorrow with some TV people, and uh, hopefully good things ahead. We keep on rolling, baby. Keep on rolling. It's the only way we make it happen, everybody. Even with the allergies, I'm not missing a show. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> we've done, Phil, you know we've done 180 shows. Woo! 180 wow. shows, including like the couple that Suki and I did back when we were meeting once a week in a studio. I went on to YouTube where all our shows are, and they have rows of six, six shows. And we had there's 30 rows of six shows. <laughs> it's 180 shows. Wow. Um, yeah. So there's 180 shows we've done, which is amazing to me because it's just, you know, it's you know what. What what comes to mind for some reason, I don't know why I'm thinking this, but that I would think that your chair that you're sitting in is threadbare by now. Oh, it's oh, it's my ass, Phil, kills me at the end of every night. I need to go and get a new chair now that you mention it. <laughs> I've got pillows under this thing. You gotta make Brit prop me up, make me taller. But uh yeah, no, it's been uh it's been great, man. Well, listen, another hunt by by the next hundred and eighty. We should be on network television, I would think, all together in a studio. Nice, nice. You know, and you know? I'm thinking by that time we'll uh, we'll have uh, reached probably every country on planet Earth. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Listen, yeah. you'll be living you'll be living in L.A. driving a Mercedes convertible at that time, and uh, we'll be going to the studios in Burbank. Yeah, you know, I'll be hanging out, uh, you know, playing golf with uh, with George Lopez and yeah, you yeah. Know. Oh, Lopez, George going to be right there with us. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Philly kid, let's light it up, baby. Where's the uh, where is the bam? Where's the bam? Well, good night, sweetheart. Well, it's time to go. Yeah, da, 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 da. Good night, sweetheart. Well, it's time to go. Boo, boo, do, boo, boo. We hate to leave you, but we really must say, oh, good night, sweetheart. Good night. Good night, Shelby, everybody. Mark, Cherry, Anna, Vicky Robinson, everybody showing over tonight. I see you, bro. We see you. <laughs> Have a